It was a pretty loaded SmackDown, so we'll take a look at Roman Reigns' storyline, Naomi's storyline, and why Ronda Rousey vs. Charlotte Flair had some fans enraged. Let's start off with the first segment of the show, which was Paul Heyman's explanation for turning on Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. Heyman explained that was no elaborate plot or scheme behind what happened at the Royal Rumble. One of the fan theories going around was that, well, maybe this was part of their plan all along, and that Roman and Heyman's split was staged to throw Brock off. Heyman debunked that theory saying that, no, he was legitimately fired and attacked by Roman Reigns during the night of his firing. He mentioned that the Royal Rumble is what changed his mind when he saw Roman attack Brock Lesnar during the match. He said that he had this realization that Roman doesn't need to be protected from Brock, that Brock has to be protected from Roman Reigns. And when Roman stuck his hand out to Paul Heyman for the title, Heyman said that he saw that as Roman extending a hand of forgiveness and made a decision right on the spot to accept it. So that clears up all the speculation there around Roman and Heyman reuniting. It wasn't the entire plan all along, and they didn't work with each other to set up the attack on Brock. The way Heyman described it, it was a moment of Roman hitting Brock with a spear and asking for the title, where Heyman made the decision on the spot to leave Brock Lesnar. And Heyman did call being with Brock Lesnar a mistake. He realized that Roman Reigns was the more dangerous man and made a quick move to go back to his side. And some fans claim that Heyman turning like that came out of nowhere, but it actually didn't. There was a lot of hints of Heyman missing Roman Reigns and probably having second thoughts of going with Brock. We saw that on the first SmackDown after day one. Heyman seemed to be legitimately heartbroken over not being with Roman anymore and expressed how he felt. And then, on WWE's The Bump before Royal Rumble, Heyman flat out said that he misses his tribal chief. So even though Heyman was sneaking around for months behind Roman's back with Brock Lesnar, Heyman came to the realization that he made the wrong move after being fully fired from the bloodline. So when Roman gave Heyman that second chance, that second opportunity, he jumped right on it right away. Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman are cut off by the returning Goldberg. Goldberg comes out, says that Roman is next, and then, 15 seconds later, we see a graphic come up for their Elimination Chamber match. The only issue here with all this is once again the logic of how did Goldberg get that match. Usually, superstars have to beg Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville for an opportunity, and they're the ones to set up the matches. But Goldberg just came out, said he's facing Roman next, and the graphic is thrown on the screen. It's just a bit strange to leave out the WWE official characters from truly booking a championship match like that. Something even as little as Sonya or Adam coming out during Roman and Goldberg's confrontation to make the match official would have been perfect because at least our WWE official characters were still involved in the booking of the match somehow. But for Goldberg to come out there and book the match himself does come off being a little bit strange. That match will take place on February 19th, so only two SmackDown episodes left to build that story. It's going to be a challenge to get everyone to fully care about this title match with only two shows to build the story. So it doesn't look like much story will be behind this match due to the lack of time, but it's just a match that WWE has seriously wanted to see for two years. So they'll finally get their dream match. The other issue is that we already have the WrestleMania main event of Roman Reigns vs Brock Lesnar confirmed, so no one is really taking Goldberg seriously here as a threat to dethrone Roman Reigns. But we'll see how that story continues to unfold for Roman Reigns. Let's dive back into Naomi's storyline. Naomi is seen again in Adam and Sonya's office. She's there to confront Sonya about what she did at Royal Rumble and wants another match with Sonya Deville. Sonya brushes it off, says she's busy this week, but decides to give Naomi a SmackDown women's title match next week on SmackDown. Although it's great to technically see Naomi back in the title picture after all these years, 
There are a few problems here with this scheduled title match. One problem being that it appears like we've seen another, repetitive moment of Sony Deville finding a way to cost Naomi the match. Hopefully that doesn't happen because seeing another repeated segment in this story would be a step back. But it seems very suspicious that Sonya would just give a title match to Naomi, so it just seems like Sonya will get involved once again. The other issue to this title match being that Naomi unfortunately has a complete 0% chance to realistically winning the title here. WWE already has their dream match of Ronda Rousey vs Charlotte Flair booked for WrestleMania. So, similar to the Goldberg situation, the WrestleMania match is already set. Charlotte obviously isn't dropping the title since she has that match with Ronda Rousey. That's another negative of announcing the WrestleMania main events so early on. We know that those matches are locked in and taking place at WrestleMania. So if those champions defend their titles a few times before WrestleMania, it's not that interesting at all because we know that there's no way they're dropping their titles since they're already booked for WrestleMania. So maybe it would have been a bit better to have the Royal Rumble winners wait until after the Elimination Chamber to announce their picks. At least that would have made things like Naomi vs Charlotte and Roman Reigns vs Goldberg a bit more interesting. But since the Rumble winners already made their picks, those title matches with other people are basically pointless. The title isn't going anywhere, so it's hard to buy into Naomi and Goldberg as threats to the titles. That brings us to Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair's main event segment on SmackDown. With Ronda announcing that she would make her decision on SmackDown, fans started assuming that she'll select Charlotte Flair. But in an attempt to still make Ronda's announcement a surprise, they pulled this prank on the fans. Sony announced that Ronda will be facing Becky Lynch at WrestleMania, and that Charlotte could now select her own WrestleMania opponent. Which again, is another empty logic moment. When has a champion ever been able to just handpick their WrestleMania opponent? Charlotte also said that she was entering the Royal Rumble as champion to earn the right to select her opponent at WrestleMania. So she loses the Royal Rumble, but still gets the right to select her WrestleMania opponent? That was a real head-scratching moment. But Charlotte Flair selects Sasha Banks, and the crowd erupts. Fans speculated how Charlotte picking Sasha was likely a jab at Sasha because Sasha has a record of zero wins and six losses at WrestleMania. So Charlotte was basically saying that Sasha was the ideal weak WrestleMania opponent that she was looking for. But then Ronda Rousey comes out and announces that she selects Charlotte for WrestleMania. So it looks like confirming Charlotte versus Sasha Banks and Ronda versus Becky at WrestleMania was only a prank in order to get shock value reaction when Ronda picked Charlotte. This moment here left Sasha Banks fans enraged the most. Sasha wasn't on the show to begin with. Then, you tease the idea of her being in a WrestleMania title match with Charlotte, only to take the match away 25 seconds later. So her fans were understandably upset, asking what was even the point of mentioning Sasha in that segment. And then, the answer to that question is exactly what we said. They mentioned Charlotte vs Sasha as a way to throw fans off, so that they'll be surprised when Ronda picks Charlotte. That seemed to be why they did that. Fans are now hoping that Sasha will still have an important role for WrestleMania 38, now that she's not in the title picture. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching guys.